Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Yes, ma'am. The President just said that he will declare a national emergency when he signs this bill. Do you still plan to file a legal challenge if and when he does that? And how quickly would you do Did I ever say I was filing a legal challenge? You said Democrats would I may. Challenge. That's an option. And we'll review our options. But it's important to note that when the President declares this emergency, first of all, it's not an emergency, what's happening at the border. It's a humanitarian challenge to us. The President has tried to sell a bill of goods to America. But putting that aside, just in terms of uh, the President making an end run around Congress, here he said, let us respect what the committee will do, and then walks away from it. But in any event, um, the President is doing an end run about Congress, about the power of the purse. You've heard me say over and over again, Article 1 the legislative branch, the power of the purse, the power to declare war, many other powers uh, are listed in the Constitution, and, of, of course, the responsibility to have oversight. So the President is doing an end run around that. Uh, it, it is, um, we will review our options. We'll be prepared to respond appropriately to it. I know the Republicans have some unease about it, no matter what they say. Uh, because if the president can declare an emergency on something that he has created as an emergency, an, an, an illusion that he wants to convey, just think of what a president with different values can present to the American people. You want to talk about a national emergency? Let's talk about today, the one-year anniversary of another manifestation of the epidemic of gun violence in America. That's a national emergency. Why don't you declare that emergency, Mr. President? I wish you would. But a Democratic president can do that. Democratic president can declare emergencies as well. So the precedent that the president is setting here is something that should be met with great unease and dismay uh, by the Republicans. And of course, we will respond accordingly uh, when we review our options. First, we have to see what the president actually says. Speaker Pelosi, yes. uh, to that end, there has been some discussion of a resolution in the House that might force Republicans to go on the record and vote against this. Would that be a, an option? I'm saying that we are reviewing our options, and we have to see what the president will say. This, uh, uh, I don't believe that the, uh, there's any good faith negotiations to have with the Republicans in Congress if they're going to support the president doing an unrun, end run about what the will of the people uh, the Congress of the United States has put forth. So we will review our options, and I'm not prepared to uh, give any preference to any one of them right now. Madam yes, Speaker, sir. On, yes, sir. On, the, on the, the news of the past couple of moments that the President told the Senate Majority Leader that he would sign the bill, you must be pleased with that, but on the national emergency, does that change the vote calculus at all? Obviously, if you have the President saying he's going to sign a piece of legislation, people would say, okay, I would vote for that but also that caveat that could potentially peel votes away. Does that have any impact? Let's just have the vote, Chad. <laughs> That's very interesting, but let's just have the vote. That changes the support one way or the other. Well, it may, I don't know, it's probably had more of an influence in the United States than we have the votes in the House. But it is, um, it is interesting to see how the vote has, the president has said to the Republican leadership in the Senate, Senator Shelby, a, a senior appropriator, the chairman of the Appropriations Committee there, a uh, respected leader uh, in the United States Senate. I don't have confidence in what you did, even though the president failed to convince the American people and their representatives in Congress of his position. But uh, let, let's just see what the votes are. Who knows what the calculus is on the other side? I, I, I don't... Uh, Does it affect your side of the aisle? No. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, as far as the, uh, as far as the uh, gun control bill, or rather the yes. background check bill, is a concern. You just said that a national emergency should yes. be declared. Well, it could be declared. Time. If you want to talk about emergency, that's a national emergency. That's something that you would like to see a president declare. No, I'm just saying a president could do that. If you want to go down that path, then let's look at what really is a national emergency. I'm not advocating for any president doing an end run around Congress. 
I'm just saying that the Republicans should have some dismay about the door that they are opening, the threshold they are crossing. Madam Speaker, in your opening comments, you spoke some about the freshman class. Yes. I was just wondering, that there have been a number of viral moments that some of these new Democratic members yeah. especially That's have the word. It's created. viral, viral, viral. But is that your question <laughs> now, the viral moments of the freshman I wanted to ask you, though, what have you thought of their influence? Do these, do these Dem freshmen have an outsized influence that you've never seen before? No. This is a welcome to the Democratic Party. <laughs> we are not a rubber stamp for anybody. We are not a monolith. We never have been. And who would want to lead a party uh, that would be described that way? Uh, the, the members come, they bring their enthusiasms, uh, their uh, priorities. Um, we welcome that. And they're not programmed. Uh, they are spontaneous, prepared, and I'm proud of them. Last okay. Question. Yes, sir. Uh, again, you mentioned the anniversary of Parkland several times. Yes. Uh, and the legislation you're bringing to the floor yes. enjoys broad support. Yes. Other legislation to that end, uh, not quite as uh, popular around the country, although it's more popular among uh, the Democratic caucus than probably ever. Uh, are you committed to bringing to the floor some, some further legislation to that end, such as uh, the restoration of the ban on assault-style weapons? Well, the uh, committee, uh, uh, committee, the Judiciary Committee and the committees of jurisdiction will review any, act any proposals that we have on any subject and what they have put prioritized. And we have, in addition to the committee, we have a, uh, a task force headed up by my Congressman Mike Thompson mm -hmm. of California has worked in a bipartisan way uh, to protect the American people. What are the measures that save the most lives? And how do we get them uh, into law a proposal that turns into legislation, that it passes as law, that makes a difference in the lives of the American people. And it's up to the committee and the task force to make their proposals as we go forward. Uh, we do think that the keeping guns out of the hands of people who shouldn't have them probably saves the most lives. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, happy Valentine's Day. Oh, all we need is love and chocolate, right? Yeah. Are you voting? <laughs> Can we still go to the Valentine's Day dinner? <laughs> <laughs> that would be the hope. Um, they, uh, it depends on how soon the Republic, the Republic, the Senate um, takes up the bill. Uh, we, we said that we wouldn't vote before 6.30 because that's when our members come back from North Carolina. So, but we hope not to have it be one minute after that. So you'll, you'll have time for dinner. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi now responding to the declaration from the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell that the president will sign the spending bill, but he's going to declare a national emergency in order to get his border wall at the border. Let me bring in CNN's David Chalian, who's joining us to react to what we just heard from Pelosi. Key line here, she says the president is doing an end round on Congress. She said Republicans should have a problem with that, too. And this is potentially dangerous precedent if, in fact, the president declares this national emergency and goes the route in which it looks like it's going to going to go here, David. That's right, Anna. You saw she was trying to do two things at the same time. One, say, hey, no president should be doing this. Don't do an end run around Congress. But hey, I also want to tell you, if there's a Democratic president one day, uh, perhaps he or she will declare uh, uh, the Democratic Party's policy initiatives to be an emergency. She, she used today's anniversary of the shooting in Parkland as, as an example. She said uh, that perhaps a Democratic president would make uh, the guns crisis in the country as they see it a national emergency and that that may be uh, something that Republicans look back on this day uh, and, and realize that by going along with the president and declaring a national emergency, it opens the door to that kind of precedent. Uh, when pressed on that, she said, but most of all, she doesn't, she's not in favor of any president of any party trying to do an end run around Congress. And most Americans don't even support an emergency. What, what do the polls say on this? Yeah, this is amazing. When we were in the field last week with our poll asking this question, you see on the screen there, uh, two thirds are not in favor of it. But as we discussed at the time, this is the bind that Donald Trump was in. Whether he took a position here of being in favor of a national emergency action, even though the country's opposed to it, 
but Republicans are fully supportive of it, Anna. I mean, 64 percent of Republicans are in favor of using this tool of a national emergency to achieve this goal and fulfill this campaign promise. Conservative Republicans, even at a greater number, support it. So the president's base is going to be quite pleased with this decision to, to enact here a, a national emergency to achieve this fundamental promise that he has made over and over again. It is their way uh, of uh, victory that he doesn't retreat here, even though he's signing uh, a government funding bill that doesn't necessarily uh, make conservatives sort of sing with joy.